Welcome to another Gearwig modeling guide. Today we'll be looking at the new minion battle engine, the Sacral Vault. This will be the first time I will have assembled and painted a huge base model. And this one looks pretty intimidating. It's got a it's huge for one. I mean even for huge base models, it's really big. It's got crazy details all over it. It's got a million candles and skulls and all kinds of stuff. So at first it seems like quite the challenge, but I found with any painting project, the best way to go is to break everything up into little elements and handle one element at a time until you end up being done. In part one of this video, we'll crack open the box, we'll look at the pieces it came with, we'll come up with a plan for gluing, assembling, and painting it, and we'll base coat the stone parts of the vault and all three gators. Here are the main pieces for the vault itself. The lower part on the left here came with four wheels separate and I've already glued them on. And the top part on the right came in two parts, two disc parts that easily glued together. So I've already assembled that. These will be our two basic elements of the vault. I'll keep these two separate because gluing them together now would be too awkward to paint. So I'll handle them as two separate projects that we paint one at a time. Notice the lower part here, all kinds of crazy awesome details, skulls and vines and everything. The uh, alligator heads in the front are missing their snouts for now. They'll be glued on later. They weren't cast as part of the resin. They have little metal bits. There will be skulls and candles glued all over this thing. Here's a look at the snouts they give you. Each snout has its own individual slot it needs to slot into. Top part, similarly awesomely detailed. Both of these pieces are heavy. They're uh, cast in resin, but they are fairly solid. So, big heavy pieces. I will need to pin them in such a way that I can hold them while painting without getting my hands all over the resin at all times. If you're constantly holding something with your hands when you're painting, your oil, finger oil, will scrape off paint and stuff. So it's easier to pin it onto some sort of holding mechanism and paint from there. And these things will be a challenge. Here's the poor guy who gets uh, sacrificed at the top. You'll notice he has these slots here and he clips right into the top. There are little guides to make sure he is uh, glued in the right spot. And this is a bunch of junk hanging from some vines that it's glued to the front. But those are our two basic uh, vault elements. Our third element will be the gators. We'll batch paint all three of these guys at once. I've decided to paint them all the same color. I like the way uh, my green gators come out. So I've uh, decided to make them all green. They are mostly cast in resin. Uh, there are a couple metal bits you see here for some of the parts that stick out. Each of the two brutes that uh, push behind the vault have an arm or two uh, cast in metal that gets glued on and the bokur at the top, his head and his hand are in metal. A lot of nice details on this guy too. I like the new resin gator molds they've been putting out. Really cool. This guy has a slot at the bottom here. Uh, he fits right into a little spiky area at the top of the vault. So his positioning up there is secure. He clips right in like the other sacrificed guy does. But uh, his pieces fit right in easily and are easy to assemble. So these guys won't be a problem at all. And here are a whole bunch of candles and skulls and junk. The set comes with just a bag of this stuff. And the instructions helpfully say, put them where you want to put them. Uh, I usually like fixed guides and people that tell me what to do. I'm a paint by numbers kind of guy. I don't like to get creative. Uh, but these are simple enough and you just put them however. They look nice all over your sacral vault. A lot of alligator skulls with candles on them, a lot of human skulls with candles on them, a lot of candles by themselves, a lot of skulls by themselves. It's a skull and candle kind of theme. Lots of skulls and candles, yep. And here is our first vault element assembled. I've glued all the candles and skulls I want on here. I've glued the vine full of junk that hangs from the top, and I've glued the guy getting sacrificed. 
I've also pinned four paper clips down at the bottom here so I can stick it into this piece of styrofoam and hold it like this while I'm painting it so I don't get my hands all over it. And this element is ready to be primed. Uh, I'm going to cheat with this sacrovolt. Cheat as often as you can when painting. And I'm going to prime it gray, the base gray that I want the stone color to be. And then I'll just dry brush onto that primed gray to get a nice stone effect for very little work. Uh, we're lucky this thing is so much stone because it lets us cheat, cheat, cheat. That's our second element, the bottom part, all assembled and ready to go. And our third element, the gators, I've uh, pinned them each individually and put them on these little styrofoam dealies to make them easy to hold while I'm painting. All their hands are glued and ready to go. I dry fit them against the altar to make sure their hands are at the right angle and when they push against it. We'll prime these black because that's just how I paint gators. Prime the black and go green from there. I just have a regular recipe for gators I'll follow. It should come out nice. But these guys are ready for the primer. And here are the two vault elements after being primed gray. I got a nice cheap primer at an art store. I believe it was Rust-Oleum, and it was just the color gray I liked. Typically when modeling, I find that uh, you sort of get what you pay for. If you get cheap paints or cheap ingredients or cheap brushes or something, you pay for it. But I've had good luck getting really cheap primers. Uh, this primer went on thin enough. It didn't obscure any details. It got a nice even coat all the way around. I didn't miss any spots. Uh, I liked it the whole way, so I uh, have not had any bad luck with cheap primers, and I highly recommend saving money in that way. Uh, here's the first gator primed black. These uh, brutes on the back are humongous. When the first Gatorman Posse uh, resin came out a few months ago, I was surprised how big they were, so much bigger than the old ones. And these brutes on the back... They are building up muscle, pushing this vault around, because they are significantly bigger even than those guys. They look really cool. So all the elements are primed and ready to be base coated. We'll start our painting steps by dry brushing the vault elements. I want to use a nice blue-gray. I'm going to use Fenrisian gray. We're going to dry brush all over this thing to add a cool stone effect and highlight some of the raised edges. When dry brushing, don't thin your paint. Leave it nice and thick right out of the bottle. Uh, these Citadel paints are perfect for dry brushing. They come a little thicker than uh, other acrylic paints, so right out of the bottle they make great dry brushing paint. Use a big fat dry brush here. These elements are huge, so we'll get as much done as we can with this big honking brush. Always wipe off as much paint as you can you don't want your dry brush to come out sort of wet and sloppy. You like barely want any paint on there, really. Uh, you can test on your hand before you paint if you're not sure. And I just very carefully and lightly scrape over all these stone elements. I think I already started a little too heavy here. If, um, if while you're dry brushing, you splash some paint on that doesn't look dry brush, but looks like you just splashed wet paint on it, you can quickly uh, grab it with your finger It'll come right off and still leave some nice uh, little particles like you want anyway, so easy to fix if you accidentally splash on too much paint. The trick here is to lightly go over the area over and over again. As you dry brush it again and again, uh, more paint will build up on the highest raised areas, like the fronts of these skulls here or the edges of the wheels. And as more paint builds up there, it'll get a lighter effect and create sort of a natural gradient from the most raised areas down to the lower areas. So when these skulls are done, it'll look sort of like brightest at the tip and then gradually go down. And this is a really cheap way, really easy way to get that gradient. You don't have to do any fancy painting stuff. You just lightly brush with a big fat brush over and over again. You don't need a detailed eye or anything. It's super easy, super good. Dry brushing also naturally leaves these particles behind as little specks of paint get stuck here and there. And a lot of effects, you don't want those particles. You want it to be a smooth blend or a hard line or something. But with stone, throwing little light-colored particles all over the model look awesome. They just look like flecks of stone. So with this one super easy step, we take a gray-primed model and make it look uh, very realistic. So this is a nice, cheap, cheating way to get a good effect. I did this all throughout my circle army when I was making constructs. And man, it was so easy. When I do living circle stuff like warp wolves and junk, I'm wet blending muscles and trying to highlight this and that, and it's real tough.
but the constructs, any stone thing, so easy, and they look really good. We'll fast forward a bit where I'm almost done dry brushing the lower vault element. You can see here on the left side, uh, the stone has been dry brushed nicely and on the right side we haven't touched it yet and there's a huge difference between the gray on the left and the gray on the right. The gray on the left already looks alive, it looks stony, it looks speckled, it looks great. And this was just one step of lightly brushing a brush over and over again. So this was easy and already looks great. And we use the same effect on the vault's top element for a very similar look. Make sure I grab all the little stone knobs that come out of the edges. I make sure I hit all the hard edges along the two discs. I get all the hard edges on the square uh, sacrificial altar at the top. Uh, but this was real easy. I then go over the whole thing one more time with another dry brush layer, this time a much lighter gray. This gray is almost white. I look to hit the same edges, but hit them uh, much lighter. I don't want to uh, throw around as many speckles as before. I just want to just touch the edges of the wheels, the edges of the skulls. This is just another dry brushing layer that will be even lighter than the gray we put on. So it adds to the gradient. This isn't strictly necessary. It uh, adds a little bit of detail, especially around these corner edges and these hard straight lines. It looks sort of like a whitish glint out here. Um, this was easier because I didn't have to do as much. And it's a very, very subtle effect, not entirely necessary, but I like doing it. Uh, it shows up on a couple of the details really nice, and some others it's okay. Like here on the back, on these little corners, it looks great. But, uh, and all the little details like the snakes and stuff, occasionally you get some edges that look cool, but uh, it's mostly these little corners look awesome. And do the same second layer to the top element, uh, focusing mainly on these hard edges from the top and the hard edges around the sacrificial altar. I don't focus too much on the uh, area below the disc because that'll be a little shadowed anyway. So just wherever the light would hit hardest, I uh, try to clip. These little knobs on the end look good. It's just a little bit of speckled grayish white. And we go around just like the other element and try to hit all the straight edges. Next, we'll work on the shadows using a black wash, some Nuln oil, which is just a very thinned down black paint. It will flow and wash into the cracks and crevices and darken some of the shadowy areas. So we start applying it like under the wheels, uh, into the skull's eyes, uh, below any of the overhanging places. Any place where there would be a shadow, we try to dump a bunch of this stuff in, and it'll darken the gray up a little bit. This is another very subtle effect that isn't super noticeable, uh, but it's worth doing in some of the areas uh, if you have the time. And it's, again, really easy. Uh, this stuff's so thin, it'll just flow where it needs to go, so you can't really mess it up. I'll hit these little sunken areas with a little drop of wash on each. That'll just darken it up nicely. I hit anywhere where uh, there's an overhang like this, I just clip right under it. There are all sorts of little cracks in this model that uh, look great if you just dump some black wash into them. So anytime I see a crack, I uh, try to hit it with this wash. 
We do the same with the top element here, focusing on the cracks and the indented areas. Uh, these cracks look great. They're big and cool. So just dumping some wash in there really makes them pop. This is another easy step that brings out some of the awesome details on this resin model. So you're always ahead of the game when you can bring out the cool model to details without having to use super fine detail brush painting or anything like that. Uh, the paint does all the work for you, you just dump it in there. So another easy fun step. Now we'll base coat our third element, the gators. Yeah, this is fun and easy. I like my Gatorman recipe. It comes out nice and bright uh, without a whole lot of work. I'm going to use Lauren Forest first. My Gatorman have three basic colors. Uh, they'll be this color, which is like a forest green, over most of their body. Their rigid back plates will be a darker green, and their underbelly will be sort of yellowy green. But I get those three colors based before I do any detail work uh, to set sort of a, a beginning for the model. Always thin your paint a little bit when you do base coating. I usually do about, oh, I don't know, one to one water to paint, or maybe three to two paint to water. A little less water sometimes, but you want a nice even coat. Typically I would do a second coat, but we're gonna do a highlight blending layer that will act as a second coat. So one coat here will do the job. We'll paint the back plates on each gator a darker green. I use this Caliban green. I'm careful here not to splash over onto our forest green. I try to keep it evenly on the back plates, but if I did, it's something I could easily repair during the blending step, so I don't need to be too careful here. This is a quick and easy work just to hit all these back plates all the way down his tail. I want a greenish yellow for his underbelly. I uh, combine two paints for this. I use a Strachan green, which is already sort of a light green, and Uriel yellow, which is really bright. The yellow goes a long way, so I do uh, two parts of that green to this yellow. And it'll come out as sort of a yellowy green, but compared to the green we've already put on, it really stands out. It's sort of a bright underbelly. These Gatorman models are molded such that their underbelly uh, scales look different, so there's a hard line you can paint down to make sure you get just the underbelly elements. I will uh, later blend this yellow into the green so it sort of looks like it gradually moves to yellow on his underbelly. It looks really cool instead of just a hard uh, yellow line, which would work fine too, but um, yellow and green blend easily together and look awesome when they do, so that's a, a step we'll do later that will look cool and make these guys look a little more natural. But uh, I like these yellow these yellow colors down here. Of course, these guys will be facing the altar, so this won't show up much when we're actually done, but whatever, it's fun to paint. So with our base coats done on all three models, they start to look like this. They already look pretty alligator-y. And all that's left is detail work, which will really make them pop and look cool, but um, with some really easy steps, we already have some good looking, nice, bright models. And the vault elements, again, with three easy steps that required no uh, like delicate painting at all. You've got a really nice stone blend here, some cool gradient elements. Uh, the cracks look cool and shadowy. So we're off to a nice, easy, lazy start here. And uh, all we have left to do is detail work, and we'll do that in our next video. Thank you for watching. For more guides like this, as well as battle reports and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com, or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site here, tell a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.